Welcome back to Boomer Ranting in the very cold woods. Software engineering is dying, and that's a good thing. Let's talk about it. So if you think about software engineering in the 60s and 70s, brilliant mega autists like Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie come to mind. People who built Unix, who built C. All of this was done in a academic slash research setting, right? I mean, uh, the uh, uh, Xerox Park, the Palo Alto Research Center comes to mind. At the time, being in the computer nerd field wasn't particularly financially rewarding. This was before the software boom of the 80s and the 90s. And so all the people who worked in the field were very brilliant nerds who just wanted to figure out what computers could do. All the salaries were like academia level salaries, which I'm, I'm sure were fine, but they were nothing like the half a million to sip lattes and do yoga all day. Now, this obviously changed in the 80s and the 90s with the software boom. Microsoft and Apple appeared and they started paying nerds a lot of money to do fun, nerdy stuff. And the normies noticed. Oh boy, did the normies notice. Which eventually culminated in people making day-in-the-life videos, working at the, their uh, San Francisco offices where they show up at 10, do a bit of work, have a couple of hours for lunch, do some yoga, chill, not do very much work at all and get paid a lot of money. And this is where the influencers really came in and started telling people, hey, bro, you could, you could just learn Python, bro, make six figs, bro. And I think that's where the beginning of the end comes in. This motivated a lot of people who weren't that interested in computers to get into programming. Because, and it, it appears that for a while this was true. If you, if you learned Python, if you watched a six hour classic, six hour tutorial on YouTube, learning how to do Python, you can make six figs, bro. And this led to the current situation where everything is massively oversaturated. All of a sudden, you got a massive influx of people Googling things like, what language should I learn in 2025 to get hired? And whilst there's nothing wrong with wanting to get hired and wanting to provide for your family, there was room for this initially because there was such a massive need for programmers where you could have people coming in just doing a job and that's it. <clears throat> but now we're at a point where that seems to be over now. The days where you could just learn Python and make six figs seem to be over. And there's so much oversaturation that me trying to get into software engineering right now seems like the worst possible time in history to do so. Or is it? Let's think about this for a second. I think the coding bubble has popped. And I think that with lowering salaries and lowering financial incentives, the people who just wanted a job and picked software engineering because six figs, bro, easy six figs from home, I think those people are going to just go do something else now. I think they're going to go, I don't know, become plumbers or something. Or whatever the, whatever the newest learn it easy skill, make six figs will be. And I think that this will allow for a return of the mega autists in the field. Over on my channel. Why do I teach things like Vim? Why do I teach things like regex and uh, seemingly irrelevant terminal utilities like grep? Why did I make an 11 hour video <laughs> when I read the entire Vim manual, eh? Eh? I'm actually in Canada. You might think I'm in Norway right now. I'm actually in Canada, eh? 
The reason why I taught it isn't because Vim is better than Emacs, bro, or Vim is better than VS Code. There are pros and cons to any editor. The reason why I teach them is because they're interesting in themselves. I don't care what the economic value of learning regex might be. I don't care. Right now I'm learning C. I don't care what the economic value of learning C is. I just think C is a very beautiful language and it's very powerful. And whilst I also love Ruby, Ruby is uh, much slower than C and it abstracts a bunch of problems away for me, which is interesting, it's fine, but I'm curious. I want to know what is it that Ruby is abstracting from me? What is it? What are, what are you hiding from me? Show me, reveal your secrets to me. Hence the new name of the channel, right? Speak Machine. Reveal your secrets to me. What's malloc? What does M malloc do? How does that work? Maybe we'll find out at some point. Who knows? <laughs> As things got worse and worse with software development, I found myself wishing I was born in California in the 1940s because that seemed to be the absolute peak in terms of computer stuff. Like, being born in the 40s meant that you would have caught the 60s and 70s, you would have caught ARPANET, you would have caught Unix, you would have caught all this cool stuff. You would have caught, you know, like uh, Xerox Park. But I'm coming around. I think maybe being born in the 90s might also be equally as cool, if not more. I have a suspicion, and maybe this is just maybe this is just copium on my part. This could be just this could just be copium on my part. I'm, I'm being honest here, but I have a feeling that with the rebirth of computer, of with the rebirth of software engineering, with all the normies getting out of the way, I think we might see a renaissance in the field. I think we might see a new Xerox Park. I think we might see just something really cool that's kind of difficult to explain. Maybe all the salaries going down, maybe all the normies leaving and getting into whatever. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe the best part of computer science is just about to start.